this. Number two, and this is very important, the spirit of pride. Number two, force of ungodliness, the spirit of pride. Pride is a destroyer. In Proverbs 16 and verse 18, the Bible tells us there, it says, pride comes before the fall. And a hot, before destruction and an haughty spirit before the fall. It means that the outcome of a proud life can be predicted. If you look at the scripture, you will discover Uzziah may be considered perhaps one of the most gifted kings of Israel. Perhaps outside of David, Uzziah was one of those kings that was strangely gifted. The Bible says that Uzziah became king at the age of 16. And yet he was operating at a frequency of wisdom that had not been seen. Uzziah invented engines. Uzziah was a war general. Uzziah was a man that understood husbandry. He was almost a man that was one, one in all and all in one. A strange man by all description. And the Bible tells us in verse 15 concerning this man Uzziah. 2 Chronicles 26 and verse 15. It says there concerning him, he said, and he made in Jerusalem engines invented by cunning men to be on the towers and upon the bulwarks to shoot arrows and great stones withal. He said, and his name spread far abroad. He became a man of renown. He said, because he was marvelously helped until he was strong. But the next verse records the tragedy. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. Pride comes before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall. His heart was lifted up to his destruction. And from that point on, the gifting of Uzziah was silenced forever on the basis of a prideful heart. If you take a very close look at that scripture, you will discover that the Bible says, it is his heart that was lifted. Pride may not be seen in the face because it is principally of the heart. When a man's heart goes up, God's hand brings him down. The heart of Uzziah went up and the hand of God brought him down. Don't forget the Bible makes us understand promotion comes not from the east or from the west. He said, but God sets up one and brings the other down. The hand of God that lifts can also pull down. We must be cautious. Pride is a destroyer. Pride is a destroyer. My prayer today is that whatever may have taken the hold of any one of our hearts in pride, today I see liberty being restored in the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody believe me, say louder, amen. amen. The Bible says in the book of James chapter 4 and verse 6, James 4 and verse 6, it makes us to understand there, it says that God gives more grace to the humble, but he resisted the proud. God makes himself a personal resistance to the proud. That is why we must fight against every hold of pride to ensure that we are walking in liberty at every point in time. Fight against every hold of pride. He resisted the proud. <laughs> if man resists you, God can help you. But when God resists you, no one can help you. No one can help you. Lifting a man who God is pulling down is an effort in futility. When God's hand pulls a man down, there is no hand that can lift him up. The Bible said concerning Uzziah, he said he died in free houses. The man who was the toast of his nation and the toast of his generation died in the boys' quarters. Why? Because of pride. When pride lifts the heart of a man up, God pulls the life of that man down. My prayer today is that God will grant each one of us the grace required to maintain a life of humility. Somebody believe me, say louder, amen. And one of the great things that can help you and I to sustain and maintain our humility is recognizing that there is nothing in our lives that is not of grace. There is nothing in our lives that is not of grace. First Corinthians chapter 4 
and verse 7. The Bible makes us to understand there, it said, Who maketh thee to differ from another? What hast thou that thou did not receive? And if you did receive it, why glory you as, you as though you have not received it? What do you have that you did not receive? What makes you to be different from another? There are people who pride themselves in achievements, in abilities, in giftings. But I tell you, if you make very keen observation, you will understand that you are only a product of his grace. You are only a product of his grace. Like our father told us in the first service, the day you were born, there were many others born in the same hospital that did not live. What ability did you have to fight for yourself then? There are many who grew up where you grew up. Grew up in the same environment and yet their lives became a devastation to behold. What make it to differ from another? Somebody say, oh, but I have degrees. There are people who started with you in school and yet could not finish. I saw a pathetic case some time ago. An individual who was a PhD holder, he had taught in three of the most prestigious universities in the world, including MIT, including Cambridge, and one other place. And yet was chronically jobless. Somebody will wonder how can somebody with such attractive credentials find themselves in such a situation? Then you will be reminded that it is not by power, it is not by might, but it is by the Spirit. I've come to recognize that the things that many complain about is a product of ignorance of the grace of God. If you see where you are, somebody is praying to be there. So at every point in time, recognize anything around you, this is grace. You are walking in health, this is grace. You wake up in the morning, this is grace. You are going to walk, you have a place to go to walk, this is grace. It is the grace of God at work. It must never be taken for granted. In 1 Corinthians 15 verse 10, Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. He said, the grace was not in vain. I labored more abundantly than they all. And then he remembered, he said, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. It is possible for you to desire to labor and not have the power to do so. He said, it is grace at work. It is grace at work. It is grace at work. I've shared many times how I went to the hospital some years ago to go and pray for an individual. And I got there to the hospital and I saw this young man lying down on the bed. And I saw a machine that was connected to him. I saw blood going out of his body into the machine and blood coming from the machine back into his body. And I began to ask, what's going on? What is this? They said his body cannot process oxygen. So the blood is taken out of his body to a machine to put oxygen inside it. And then the machine returns the blood back to his body. And the mother told me, said, this process costs 9,000 pounds every week. For oxygen to enter his blood. You have been sitting here today. And oxygen has been entering your blood for free. It is not by power. It is not by might. But by the grace of God. Will you lift your hand to heaven and say, thank you, Jesus. Say now that thank you, Jesus. The problem with pride is that pride can be very subtle. It can be very subtle. It makes men to beat their chest in secret. Oh, look at what has happened. The way I performed in that interview, I, there's no how. I see how they gave me the job. You are beating your chest in secret. When this tabernacle was constructed, I remember God's servant has shared this many times, how that he called all the pastors together and he said to them, if any man in the secret says, we built this thing, God will kill him. Why? He said, because we don't have capacity to do it. Don't pretend about achievement, recognize engracement. 
There is no achiever in this kingdom. This kingdom is made of men and women who are endued by grace. Shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. That is why whenever men give you applause, quickly go and bow and give glory to God. Hear this and hear it very well. Anytime a man settles down to take the praise of men and does not give it to God, God reacts on the spot. The Bible said that the people shouted and said concerning Herod, this is the voice of God and not of a man. <laughs> and Herod kept quiet. He was nodding inside his heart. God said, did I see a response from you returning glory to me? No response. Angels slap him. The Bible said instantly he was smitten and worms ate him up. Right there on the throne, his defilement was open for all to see. Pride is a destroyer. Recognize grace. Every area of your life where there is one thing or the other to celebrate, it is the product of the grace of God. Somebody wrote an examination. Yes, you prepared. You did all that you need to do. But it's the grace of God that helped you. Have you not seen people who read very well, enter into the exam, and everything jam, bam. Everything he read, everything networked together to confusion. So he's sitting down there looking at the question. The question is looking at him. He's telling the question, but I know you. The question says, I don't know you. It's all of grace. It's all of grace. My prayer today is that that grace for humility will come afresh upon your life. Somebody believe it, say loud, amen.